One of the most practical books in the Bible is the book of James. Notice James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 27. The Lord tells us pure religion. That's what we're all interested in. Is pure religion undefiled by human beings? Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the widows and the fatherless in their affliction and to keep Himself unspotted from the world. That's pure religion. The word unspotted means contamination. You know how many times in the last few months Corpus Christi has had to boil their water? Nobody wants to drink water that is contaminated. But what about a soul that is contaminated? Made in the image of God. Our souls can be contaminated. How? By the world. Pure religion is a person who keeps himself uncontaminated from the world. In James chapter 4, verse 4, James says friendship of this this world is enmity against God. That word means hostility. And then in the end of James 4 and verse 4, he said, Whosoever would be the friend of this world is the enemy of God. James 4, verse 4. I don't want to be anybody's enemy. Sometimes it's unavoidable. But I sure don't want to be the enemy of God. And if I get too close to this world, James tells me I am God's enemy. What does that mean I can't have a friend with someone who's not a Christian? Does that mean I can't have any friendships with a person who's not a member of the Lord's church? Of course not. I've had dear friends through the years who were not Christians. What does it mean? Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we have to ascertain what the Bible means by the word world. It's used in at least three different ways in your Bible. First of all, notice John, Gospel of John, 21, 25. John 21, 25 is John calls out his Gospel book. He's talking about all the works that Jesus did while He was on this earth. And he says, I suppose if all of them were written down, all the things that Jesus did while He's on this earth, if all those things were written down, he said, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books. That's a tub full of books. And that just tells us our gospel accounts are only summaries of the life of Christ. They're not really biographies. They're summaries. John says he did a lot of other things. 
And if everything he did was written down, he said the world couldn't even contain all the books. That's the word cosmos, world. It means the world on which we live, the planet, earth. Now that's not what James is talking about when he says don't be unspotted by the world. It's the same word, cosmos. But that's not what he's talking about. There's nothing inherently evil about this world we live on. God made it. It's not inherently evil. So that's not the world he's talking about. Look in John chapter 3. Gospel of John chapter 3. Verse number 16. God so loved the world. All right, now that's not the same world that he's talking about in John 21 25. That's not the planet. He's not talking about he loves the dirt. He's not talking about that. What's he talking about? John 3 16 is talking about the people of the earth. God so loved the world. Now it's the same word in the original language and in the English translation. It's the same word, cosmos, world. But it's a different context. He's talking about the people of the earth. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That's talking about the people of earth. We're supposed to love the people of the earth. 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world. We're supposed to love the people of the earth. We're supposed to love them so much we take the gospel to them. We're supposed to love everybody. So that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about the people of the earth. We're supposed to love them. God loved them. Jesus loved them so much He died for them. There's another way the word is used, and it's in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse number 7. When Jesus is conversing with his own brethren in his family. Which, by the way, did you know that at first they didn't even believe in him? Wouldn't that be encouraging? Your own family doesn't even have trust in you? That'd be neat, wouldn't it? His own family didn't even believe in him at first. And that's what he's talking about in John 7, verse 7. And look what he says to his brothers in the flesh. He said, the world cannot hate you. But me it hateth. Why? Why did they hate Jesus? All he ever did was good for us. Why would anybody hate Jesus? Well, he tells you. He says, because I testify of it that its works are evil. Now that's the world we're not supposed to love. That's the world we can't get too close to. The Apostle John talks more about the world than anyone else in all the New Testament. And he explains it very clearly. First John, toward the end of your New Testament, you have first, second, third John, then Jude and Revelation. Well, in first John chapter five, verse number nineteen, look what he says. The whole world lies in wickedness.
Well, now everybody in the world is not wicked. I know some people who aren't even Christians who are pretty nice people, who have good morals, who treat people right, who are honest. That's not what he's talking about. What John is telling us is there is a worldwide kingdom ruled by Satan that opposes God and all of God's people. That's the world he's talking about. John wrote this in Revelation, no S on it, chapter 12, verse 9. He talked about how the devil deceived the whole world. Well, he hadn't deceived everybody in the world because some people are Christians. What is he talking about? He's talking about a kingdom that is worldwide ruled by Satan. What do we learn about this kingdom? Well, we learn in Colossians 1, 12 and 13 You've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Colossians 1, 12 and 13. So there is a kingdom ruled by Satan. All of us at one time were members of that kingdom. We were citizens in that kingdom. But by the love of God, we have been delivered from that kingdom and now we're in the kingdom of Christ. So there's those two kingdoms. The Bible tells us this kingdom that I'm talking about is ruled by Satan. Revelation 12, 9. He's deceived all of them. 1 John 5, 19. The whole world lies in wickedness. Ephesians 2, verse 2. He's called the prince of the power of the air. Second Corinthians four four. He talks about unbelievers, and he says Satan has blinded their eyes, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. But notice how he describes Satan in Second Corinthians four verse four: the God of this world. That's the world we're talking about. A worldwide kingdom that is ruled by Satan, that is opposed to God and everyone who lives for God. Now, what we have to understand these two kingdoms are not compatible. These two kingdoms are at war. They are antagonistic toward one another. 1 John 3, 13. Again, toward the end of your New Testament. 1 John chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, do not marvel if the world hates you. That's that worldwide kingdom ruled by Satan. Antagonistic to God's kingdom. Don't be surprised if there's hate there. Not just difference of opinion. No, it's deeper than that. Not just a different belief system. Oh, that's what people would have you to believe. The liberals would have you to believe. Oh, we just believe a little bit differently. No, there's hatred. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now look in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 
Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew Him not. Okay, what does that mean? The world knows we exist. How could they hate us? We don't know we exist. It's not talking about that. It's talking about comprehension. The world does not understand Christians. How could they? They do not understand the way we live. They cannot understand the way we think. So he said, just like they didn't know Jesus, they don't know His followers. They don't understand. They don't comprehend. They don't know us in the sense of understanding where we're coming from. They don't understand it. (laughs) So when some liberal preachers went door to door, and ask people of the world, what kind of worship would you like to have? We're fixing to build a new building down the street. What kind of worship would you like to have? We're going to ask the children of the devil how they want to worship God. Boy, I tell you, liberalism is so crazy and mixed up. These two kingdoms oppose each other. Go back to the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Jesus makes it clear. John 15, verse 18 and 19. Jesus said to His closest followers, If you were of the world, this kingdom over here we're talking about, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, because I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Why do they hate us? We've been chosen out of the world. We're not in the same kingdom with them anymore. They don't understand. And you know, anybody that's different gets looked on with suspicion. (laughs) Even among God's people. If somebody doesn't care about material things as as much as the rest of us do in the church, we kind of look at them funny. Ah, they're kind of different. Yeah, they just might be right. Not so attracted to material things, we think something's wrong with them. Maybe there's something wrong with us. If you were of the world, the world was all of its own, but because you are not of the world, because I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. John 17. In verse number 14, Jesus said to His closest followers, You are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And He says, as He prays to God, I have given them Thy word, and the world has hated them. You are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you would take them out of the world. So somebody wants to go up on a mountain, get away from all this junk down here, Sometimes I don't blame them. I'd like to be on that mountain sometime too. I just don't call it a mountain. I call it the mother ship. That's where I go to get away from this jungle. But some people got the idea in the Middle Ages just go up on a mountain, sit in a monastery all day and read Scriptures. Have nothing to do with the world. 
Is that not the direct opposite of the prayer of Jesus Christ? I pray not that you would take them out of the world. He said, that's not what we want. That's not the will of God to go up on some mountain somewhere and get away from everybody. I think it'd be nice too. I've thought about it a lot of times. But that's not the will of God. I pray not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil that's in the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through Thy Word. Thy Word is truth. Set them apart from this world. Don't take them out of it. How can we be the light to the world if we're not in the world? Philippians 2.15 1 John chapter 4 I have to be careful. Got a little too excited this morning. It's y'all's fault. I had to be carried out this morning because of y'all, because you acted so interested, I just couldn't stop. So I went too long, and the dumb old man couldn't breathe. Y'all caused that because you just acted so interested. Don't act so interested. I mean, most places you see people clipping fingernails, doing on their phone. Not here, boy. Everybody is room. That's good. It's hard to quit. But I have to. I won't be carried out again. 1 John 4. Verse 4 and following, he makes it clear. You are of God. You're not of the world. People of the, of the world, they speak of the world and people hear them. He said, but you're of God. And people who of God will hear us. That's the inspired apostles. Those who are not of God hear us not. In other words, the world understands worldly language. Cussing, crowling, drinking, dancing... All that kind of junk. The world understands that. They hear that. He said they hear it. But those who are of God hear the inspired apostles. Those who do not hear us, they're not of God. And he says that's the way you know the difference between truth and error. Well, what does that mean? Those who listen to the inspired apostles? Those who won't listen, they're in error. That's it. You won't listen to what the Bible says because you're too stubborn. You're not going to change. And that's not just talking about doctrinal error. That's talking about the way you live. That's the way you know truth from error. People who listen to God's inspired apostles, they're from God. People in the world, they're not all bad people. Some of them might better than us. They're not all bad people. There's some good people. They just don't understand. And that's what we're here on this earth for, is to sit down and explain to good people in the world, look, do you not know that you're lost in your sin? And what you need to do is not only believe in Jesus, you need to turn away from your sin. You need to repent. You need to confess Jesus before men. You need to be immersed in water, not to join some church, some denominational church, but to have your sins forgiven then they can be taken out of the worldly kingdom and put in the kingdom of Christ. You can do that now. 